Hello everyone, my name is Mini Sethi. I hope you all are staying healthy. Today we are going to talk about theory of consumer behavior for UGC NET. And in today's video, we will cover topics cardinal utility, total utility, marginal utility with the table and diagram, relation between total utility and marginal utility, lobe diminishing marginal utility, and ordinal utility, and indifference curve budget line with the table and diagram, and marginal rate of substitution, and consumer equilibrium with indifference curve, and uh, what is demand, low of demand, exceptional of low of demand, types of demand, elasticity of demand, types of elasticity of demand. All this topic we will cover in today's video. So let's start it. So what is cardinal utility? Cardinal utility measure utility in terms of number like 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. And these number will be called utils. Cardinal utility measure utility in terms of number like 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. And these number will be called utils. Whenever we buy anything, we get some happiness, we get some satisfaction or we can say that we get some utility. When we measure our utility in terms of number, it will be called cardinal measurement of utility. For example, when I eat ice cream, I receive a satisfaction or we can say that I receive utility equal to 5 utils. It will be called cardinal measurement of utility. Now we will see total utility and marginal utility. Total utility is the total amount of satisfaction that we receive after consuming given amount of product. Total utility means the total amount of satisfaction that we receive after consuming given amount of product. For example, I eat 5 ice cream and satisfaction I receive from all 5 units of ice cream is equal to 30 utils. This 30 utils will be called my total utility. So what is marginal utility? Marginal utility means change in total utility after consuming one more unit of product. Marginal utility means change in total utility after consuming one more units of product. For example, when I was eating 5 ice cream, my total utility was equal to 30 utils. But as I increase one more unit of ice cream, is now I am eating 6 ice cream. Now my total utility is equal to 30, 35 utils. So change in utility after consuming one more unit of ice cream is 35 minus 30 is equal to 5. This 5 will be called my marginal utility because marginal utility is change in total utility after consuming one more units of product. Now we are going to talk about table and diagram of total utility and marginal utility. In first column we have units of ice cream, second column we have total utility, third column we have marginal utility. First unit of ice cream is giving total utility is equal to 10. Second units of ice creams are giving total utility is equal to 18. Third units of ice creams are giving total utility is equal to 24. Similar you can see for other units. And in third column we have marginal utility. As we know marginal utility means change in total utility after consuming one more units of product. When we are consuming one ice cream our total utility is equal to 10. But when we are consuming uh, two ice creams our total utility is equal to 18. You can see after consuming one more units of ice cream change in total utility is 8. 18 minus 10 is equal to 8. This 8 will be called our marginal utility. When we increase one more unit of ice cream, change in total utility is 24 minus 18 is equal to 6. This 6 will be called our marginal utility. When we increase one more unit of ice cream, our change in total utility is equal to 28 minus 24 is equal to 4. This 4 will be called our marginal utility. Similar, you can calculate for other units. When we convert this table into diagram, we will get this. Here you can see on x-axis we have units of ice cream and y-axis we have total utility. In below diagram on x-axis we have units of ice cream and y-axis we have marginal utility. Initially this TU is our total utility curve. Initially our total utility is increasing at B point it become constant after that it start declining. And our marginal utility is continuous declining. At A point it becomes zero and after that it becomes negative. So this curve will be called our marginal utility curve. Now we will see relationship between total utility and marginal utility. Initially when total utility is increasing but at decreasing rate that's why marginal utility is reducing. At A point total utility become constant, total utility become maximum. That's why marginal utility becomes zero. 
after a point you can see total utility start reducing that's why marginal utility become negative so we can say that when total utility increase at decreasing rate then marginal utility fall when total utility become maximum then marginal utility become zero when total utility start declining then marginal utility become negative now we are going to talk about law of diminishing marginal utility according to this law as we are consuming more and more units of product our marginal utility fall according to this law as we are consuming more and more units of product our marginal utility start falling here you can see first column we have units of ice cream and second column we have marginal utility you can see as you are consuming more and more units of product your marginal utility is falling at first unit your, your marginal utility is 30 then 20 10 0 eventually it become negative 10 you can see your marginal utility is continuous falling as you are consuming more and more units of product same thing you can see in this diagram your marginal utility is continuous falling at a point it becomes zero after that it become negative but now question is that why your marginal utility fall as you are consuming more and more units of product because uh, this is human nature when we have more of anything we less value it for example you have only one black shirt then you will give so much value to it but when you have so many black shirt you will not go give so much importance to it so we can say that when we have more and more units of any product we less value it that's why our marginal utility fall so this will be called law of diminishing marginal utility now we are going to talk about ordinal utility as we know in cardinal utility we assign number to major utility but in ordinal utility we don't assign any number to major utility but we give rank to major utility in ordinal utility we give rank to measure our utility for example we can compare between two ice cream and say this ice cream is much better than is this ice cream rather than assigning any number now we are going to talk about indifference curve indifference curve is based on ordinal utility what is indifference curve indifference curve shows a combination of two goods which give us equal level of satisfaction indifference curve shows a combination of two goods which give us equal level of satisfaction here you can see first column we have combination second column we have good x and third column we have good y at a combination we are buying one unit of x and 12 unit of y at b combination we are buying two units of x and eight unit of y similar you can see other combination c d and e but main thing is that whatever combination consumer will buy he will get equal level of satisfaction when we convert this uh, table into diagram we will get this in this uh, diagram you can see on x axis we have x good and y axis we have y good so here you can see so many combination a b c d e as we earlier discussed these combination when we join all this combination we will get one curve this ic curve will be called indifference curve here all combination will give us same level of satisfaction means whatever combination we buy a b c d or e we will get equal level of satisfaction so this will be called indifference curve now we are going to talk about marginal rate of substitution marginal rate of substitution basically tell us how much a unit of one good must be given up so that we can consume one additional unit of other goods marginal rate of substitution basically tell us how much a unit of one good must be given up so that we can consume an additional unit of other goods and formula of calculating marginal rate of substitution of x for y is delta y over delta x here delta y is 3 and delta x is 1 means in order to consume one unit of x we must be given up three unit of y so we can say the margin rate of substitution of x for y is equal to 3 now we are going to talk about budget line budget line shows different combination of two goods which consumer can buy with his given income and prices of goods budget line shows different combination of two goods which consumer can buy with his given income and prices of goods here given income of consumer is 50 rupees and uh, price of one gel pen is equal to 10 rupees and price of one dot pen is equal to 5 rupees 
So in first column we have combination, second column we have gel pen and third column we have dot pen. With this given income, given income is 50 rupees. With 50 rupees a consumer can buy a, a, a 0 gel pen or 10 dot pen or consumer can buy 1 gel pen or 8 dot pen or consumer can buy 2 gel pen or 6 dot pen. Similar you can see other combination. Basically budget line shows a different combination of two goods which consumer can buy with this given income and prices of goods. When we convert this table into diagram, we will get this. In this uh, diagram on x axis we have gel pen and y axis we have dot pen. Here you can see different combination as we earlier discussed A, B, C, D and E, F. When we join all this combination, we will get budget line. This line basically represent our budget line. Now we are going to talk about consumer equilibrium with the help of indifference curve approach. In this diagram on x axis we have good x and y axis we have good y. This AB is our budget line and IC1, IC2 and IC3 are our indifference curve. E is our consumer equilibrium point because at this point budget line is tangent to our indifference curve and where budget line tangent to our indifference curve it will be called consumer equilibrium point. So we can say that E is our consumer equilibrium point. As we know budget line tell us about different combination of two goods which we can buy with given price and income and the indifference curve tell us about different combination of two goods which give us equal level of satisfaction. At this E point our budget and satisfaction are matched with each other that's why we can say that E is consumer equilibrium point. We cannot establish our consumer equilibrium point at this lower indifference curve I see one. Because we know lower indifference give us a low level of satisfaction. We cannot establish our equilibrium at this higher indifference curve. I see three, no doubt high, higher indifference curve give us higher level of satisfaction. But this indifference curve is beyond our budget line. You can see our budget line is here and indifference curve is here. So we can say that our consumer equilibrium, equilibrium point is E where budget line tangent to our indifference curve. Now we are going to talk about demand. What is demand? Demand is amount of goods and services that consumer are willing to buy and able to buy at a given price and time. Demand is amount of goods and services that consumer are willing to buy and able to buy at a given time and price. Able to buy means he has money to buy this product. For example, I am willing to buy this marker plus I also have money to buy this marker. It will be called my demand. Now we are going to talk about types of demand. First is price demand. Price demand shows the relationship between price and demand only. Income demand. Income demand shows the relationship between demand and income only. Cross demand. Cross demand shows the relationship between demand and prices of related goods. Cross demand shows the relationship between demand and prices of related goods. As we know related goods means substitution goods and complementary goods. So, cross demand shows relationship between demand and prices of complementary goods and substitution goods. Next is joint demand. When we demand two or more product together, it will be called joint demand. For example, you want to drink coffee. That's why you together demand milk, sugar and coffee beans. It will be called joint demand. Next is composite demand. When good is demanded for fulfilling more than one purposes, it will be called composite demand. When good is demanded for fulfilling more than one purposes, it will be called composite demand. For example, you do demand for water for fulfilling so many purposes like bathing, cooking, washing, etc. Next is derived demand. Derived demand means when demand of one thing depend on demand of other thing. Derived demand means when demand of one commodity depend on the demand of other commodity. For example, labor demand for production depend on demand of final product in market. Now we are going to talk about low of demand. Low of demand assume all other factors that affect demand are constant. Demand is only affected by price. When price increase, demand fall. When price fall, demand increase. As we know, there are so many factors that affect demand, uh, for example, income, taste, preferences, etc. But in low of demand, we assume all other factors that affect demand remain constant. Demand is only affected by price. When price increase, demand fall. When price fall, demand increase. In this table, you can see when price is 1, demand is 5. But as price increase from 1 to 5, our demand fall from 5 to 1. 
where all other factors that uh, affect demand are constant demand is only affected by price same thing you can see in this diagram on x axis we have quantity and y axis we have price when price is 1 demand is 5 but as price increase from 1 to 5 our demand fall from 5 to 1 so in this case demand is only affected by price all other factors that affect demand remain constant this dd will be called our demand curve so we can say that in case of law of demand we assume all other factors that affect demand remain constant demand is only affected by price now we are going to do exceptional of law of demand as we know according to law of demand when price increase demand fall when price fall demand increase but exceptional of law of demand break this rule of law of demand first exceptionally webland goods webland goods are luxurious goods for example diamond expensive mobile expensive car etc so in case of law of demand when price increase demand fall but we deliberately buy webland goods when their prices are very high so that we can show off in front of society second is lack of knowledge some people think high price means good quality and low price means bad quality that's why they they buy goods which has high price next is given good given goods are strongly inferior goods and in case of given goods the price effect are always positive means when price increase then their demand also increase next is expectation of rise in price in future when we expect in future price are going to rise more then we buy more even current price is very high so we can say that these all will be called exceptional of law of demand which break the rule of law of demand now we are going to talk about elasticity of demand elasticity of demand measure the extent to which demand change due to change in price income and prices of related goods elasticity of demand measure the extent to which demand change due to change in price income and prices of related goods or we can say that elasticity of demand basically tell us how much demand change due to change in income price and prices of related goods now we are going to talk about types of elasticity of demand elasticity of demand mainly divided into three parts price elasticity of demand income elasticity of demand and cross elasticity of demand there are so many method to measure price elasticity of demand and the type of price income and cross elasticity of demand we will make one separate video for this but in today's video i am going to tell you meaning of these terms so first is price elasticity of demand price elasticity of demand is measurement of change in demand in relation to change in its price price elasticity of demand is measurement of change in demand in relation to change in its price and formula of calculating price elasticity of demand is percentage change in quantity demanded divided by percentage change in price second is income elasticity of demand income elasticity of demand is measurement of change in demand in relation to change in income and formula of calculating income elasticity of demand is percentage change in quantity demanded divided by percentage change in income next is cross elasticity of demand cross elasticity of demand is measurement of change in demand in relation to change in prices of related goods as we know related goods are complementary goods and substitution goods that's why we can also say that cross elasticity of demand is measurement of change in demand in relation to change in prices of substitution goods and change in prices of complementary goods and formula of calculating cross elasticity of demand is percentage change in quantity demanded of x good divided by percentage change in price of y good this is all about theory of consumer behavior i think you got it and thank you so much for watching this video bye take care